I want you to close your eyes. We made a lot of petitions to the Lord, but the Lord said there are things that I have done in people's lives. I have blessed them. So I want you to think about that. I want you to think about something that God has blessed you with and how he has blessed you with. The mercy he has bestowed upon you, the grace that has been evident in your life, the safety, the protection, the provision, whatever it is, focus on something that you know he has done for you. Dwell on that for a moment. And now, let's stand and sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Now let's be seated and have the deacons come and take our offering this morning. But let's pray before we start. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, for the gift that it is, for the strength and hope that it brings. Work it out in our hearts, Lord God. Soften us so that we would comply with it and desire it and feed upon it. We thank you for your word, Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> you then, my son, Timothy, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. Endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. Similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all of this. Remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead and descended from David. This is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Here is a trustworthy saying. If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will disown us. If we are faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Over the past couple of weeks, began a conversation that we are calling considering the future of the church. And at the beginning, there was the encouragement in this that we understand that the goal of our redemption is first of all to be formed into the image of Christ and also to be perfected in our union with him and him in us. And I want to take it another step forward today and consider what this is all about. So I'll begin here. Jesus 
said as he died on the cross, it is finished. It is finished. The work is done. I wonder why he didn't, after his resurrection, go find the one who had put him on that cross, the evil one, the work of whom he had to reclaim and redeem in his death. Why he didn't just go get that son of a gun and bind him up and throw him into the pit, lake of fire and the pit of hell at that point in time? What, what, what was that all about? Why have we had to go through all of this? Why have his believers and the church have had, why have they had to go through all of this? I read something this week. It's in, uh, it's in the introduction to a book. It says, if the Lord had wanted things to be easy for us, he could have bound the devil immediately after his resurrection. We must understand that the battle that we are engaged in is a good fight. There can be no victories without a battle. We have been entrusted with divinely powerful weapons that no evil can stand against. The Bible is God's plan, and if you haven't done so yet, read the end of the story. We win. You're on the side that cannot lose. The battle is for our sake so that we can grow in the character and faith, and here's where we're going today, that will decide the degree of authority that we are entrusted with in the age to come. The authority that God, that Jesus will bestow upon us in the age to come. Jesus said to the church of Laodicea, to him who overcomes, I will grant him to sit down with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give him the right to sit down with me on my throne. Imagine that. He's saying that to the people of God. He's saying that to the churches. And this is the reason that we must go through these trials and tribulations and difficulties and persecutions and humblings. And it may not seem like it makes sense but when you think about what Jesus has planned for his people, for those who he will come and fill with the fullness of himself as his kingdom is ready to be revealed in the earth, it's worth fighting for. Every time you die to self, Every time you don't give in to your flesh, every time you resist the devil and he make him flee from you, you gain something in the heavenly realms that cannot be seen yet but will be revealed when Christ returns. If it is to love in the face of a, hatred, a hating person, you are gaining something that you will have authority over in the future. How much do we give up when we indulge ourselves? It's impossible to know at this point in time, but I think it's more than we could ever ask or imagine. What we give up, we do not know. But what we are striving for is to be one with Christ and his position in the world that is to come. Paul's trustworthy saying, if we died with him, we will also live with him. 
Implicit in that statement is, if we don't die with him to the world, to the flesh, to the devil, then we will not necessarily live with him in that capacity. I have to admit, I don't completely understand that concept at this point in time. But that's what the word says. If we endure, implying persecution and having to humble ourselves in the face of proud people and, you know, like that opening I read today, not needing to be consoled but to console, not needing to be loved but to love. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we endure to him who overcomes, I will give. If we disown him, he will also disown us. Paul is talking to the church. He is talking to believers. And in each one of us, there is the capacity to fail and to disown. But the battle is for our sakes, and we are in a good fight, and it is the grace of God that allows us to go through this process, this battle, against the world, against the flesh, against the devil, so that we might overcome and might have that authority which Jesus bestows, bestowed upon us. And in my reflection on this concept, I think that I understand that it can also be bestowed in this age and at this time in a body of believers who are pursuing this together, who are knit together with a desire to love and to serve him in this world, that he would bestow some authority in circumstances and situations, an ability to move and direct and control things without it being from our flesh or from our own souls, but that he would reveal to us how we can have an impact in lives and in this world. If we are faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. That speaks loudly to me because I find myself frustrated in my own faithlessness my lack of faithfulness to God, to the work. I feel like Paul is just an amazing example here. And you know what? Here's what he says. He says in verse 10, Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Paul went through what he went through for the benefit of other people. I think about the time with the Philippian jailer. He was a Roman citizen. He was thrown into jail and beaten without right, without, it was, it was an illegal act that the government was perpetrating on him and on his being. And he didn't play that card of power of I'm a Roman citizen until it benefited everybody else in the church. He could have done it and say, hey, hands off, hands off. What you're doing is wrong. No, but he saved that card until the time when the church benefited, when others who believed in Christ, who he was living for at that time, would benefit from that event. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. As well. There's a word in here in verse 8, and it's, uh, it's translated as kings. You have become kings. That means essentially reigning over, having authority in an area. So let's read what the apostle says to this church that was misdirected, who was prideful. He says, so then men ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the secret things of God. He's talking about the apostles. Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. 
I care very little if I am judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear, but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in the darkness and will expose the motives of men's hearts. At that time, each will receive his praise from God. Now, brothers, I have applied these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit, so that you may learn from us the meaning of the saying, do not go beyond what is written. Then you will not take pride in one man over against another, for who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not? Already you have all you want. In other words, you're complacent. You already, you're satisfied with where you're at. Already you have become rich. You have become kings. You're reigning now. And that without us. How I wish that you really had become kings and were reigning in this time and in this place so that we might be kings with you. For it seems, that, seems to me that God has put us apostles on display at the end of the procession. Like men condemned to die in the arena, we have been made a spectacle to the whole universe, to angels as well as to men. We are fools for Christ. But you are so wise in Christ, we are weak, but you are strong, you are honored, we are dishonored. To this very hour, we go hungry and thirsty, we're in rags and we're brutally treated, we're homeless, we work hard with our hands, when we are cursed, we bless, when we are persecuted, we endure it, when we are slandered, we answer kindly. Up to this moment, we have become the scum of the earth, the refuse of the world. The illustration that Paul uses in here is not unimportant. In verse 9 he says, For it seems to me that God has put us apostles on display at the end of the procession like men condemned to die in the arena. In that time, entertainment was watching men wrestle beasts, watching them be devoured, watching them fend for their lives against animals that could rip them limb from limb. And what they did, after the strongest went first, the weaker were brought in after. And all they did was enjoy watching them get devoured by these beasts. And so Paul is saying that God has put us apostles on display at the end of the procession. He has set us up in this situation, to be going through this humiliation, this torturous existence. Considering the future of the church, there are, there are teachers out there who teach that this is all about our well-being and happiness in this world, our comfort, our security, our, love, our loving life, in this world and in this time. It's not about that. It's about what we will achieve in this life in persevering and overcoming these things that will produce for us an inheritance, a position in the kingdom of authority where we will sit and reign with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul never sought that situation where he would go to the Roman governor, the Roman emperor, the Roman, even the Jews, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and negotiated with them and tried to get them to understand what he was doing. He never, he never sought that. And that's someplace we will be going in the next few weeks about the church and the world. We are called to be separate. The saints have been chosen out of the world 
to bear witness of God and his kingdom, not to gain control of people and resources of this world. So Paul was willing to be weak. He was willing to be poor. He was willing to be abused for the sake of the gospel and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ because he knew that God had put him there, and that's quite clear. It seems that God has put his apostles on display at the end of the procession. If we are living in the fullness of the Spirit, if we are walking with the intent of bringing Christ to the world in whatever way, shape, or form that that takes, we will be hated. We will not be embraced. There is a separation that re is required if the gospel will go forth the way that God has called us to bring it. So I pray that we would have that strength, have that understanding, that spiritual understanding that that is where we are going, that we are to overcome so that we might receive from him that which he has judged and determined to be right. One last encouraging point that I got out of this, it struck me. Verse 5 of this chapter. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait till the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of men's hearts. At that time, each will receive judgment from God. Each will receive recompense for every mistake that they made. No, no. No, when Jesus appears, when he reveals the intents of our hearts, we will receive praise from God for what we did accomplish. Because what we have to accomplish is not easy. It's challenging. It's difficult. But the more we learn to embrace it, the more the praise will be ours in that hour when what is truly in our hearts is revealed. Amen? Amen. May the God of peace, who the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, may he equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.